It has now become our most popular program. Very, very heavy on soil management, on ecosystem management, everything organic. Learning your various tools and your diagnostic tools and, and, and how products much, and that. How many students would you have for a course like that? Usually we top it at 20, maybe 21, 22. Because yeah. uh, these are intensive learning experiences and if we want to be able to answer questions properly and relate to our students, we could probably have, we have long waiting lists. Mm -hmm. So it would be very easy to fill them with 30, 40 students, but that, to me that's not teaching anymore, that's lecturing. Mm -hmm. So we like to have a, you know, we like to... We want our students to succeed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's really important for us. So, and then we have, so this year we added two new courses to that and we actually combined these four courses now into a diploma. Students mm -hmm. can earn a very college diploma if they complete all four courses, mm -hmm. being the Ecologic Landscape Design, the Organic Nest mm -hmm. Gardener, a Growing Food in the City mm -hmm. course, where we really take all the, you know, all the science we've learned and the principles we've mm -hmm. learned in the Organic Nest Gardener course and apply them mm -hmm. hands on. So most of that course is actually held in students' gardens. Nice. So the students, we will change. I mean, some not, not every student hosts a, hosts a lecture, but the ones with the larger gardens uh, then have a certain class held in their garden. Oh, and wow. Maybe it's the garden bed installation or seeding or building, you know, protection structures and trellises or, you know, whatever just happens to be right down to harvesting and storing food mm -hmm. and, and those kind of things. And then the fourth course we've added is plant knowledge because we... I, I know what's being taught and I know what I learned and the difficulty I had with what I learned uh, is that we didn't learn to put plants together very intelligently, especially in ornamental landscapes. Because we will take a tree, it comes from one ecosystem and the understory plants from a different ecosystem and they don't necessarily get along with each other. Right? So even learning which plants like to grow with each other and, and what their native ecosystem is like so we can help provide them what they require to successfully grow to make us happy, right? I mean, if we want that from them, we have to, we have to provide for their livelihood and for, for their health and happiness. So, even just, so that's, that's the last course we're doing this year, the plant knowledge course. And those last two courses actually extend all year, maybe once a, maybe once a month at times, because the, um, the garden, we work in the garden to do exactly what's required at that particular mm -hmm. time. So we seed at the right time and we uh, harvest at the right time and those kind of mm -hmm. things. And the plant knowledge course, we go and look at the plants that are really interesting at that time, but really what we do, we find an ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Maybe a garden, a park, or a small area of something. That's really great. Mm -hmm. Like everything works together. It's perfectly designed, the plants thrive. Mm -hmm. We identify everything in there and see how these plants relate to each other and how we can, uh, you know, we can learn from this. It's fascinating. When you got started in landscaping, what, what, what got you into the field? I love gardening. You love gardening. And I had, before that, um, before I became a professional, I actually had a landscape installed, like professionally installed. Okay. And it was clear to me that the installation was mediocre at, at best and that some things were obviously done wrong. Mm -hmm. I found that rather upsetting, but I also found it rather intriguing. Because mm -hmm. I come from a family of, of builders. My, my dad was a builder, and so every time I'd go to Germany and to visit him, he'd show me all his houses that he'd built. You know, the pride he had in that. And I thought, I don't care about building houses, but I really would like to learn to build landscapes. Mm -hmm. So I specialize very much in design and construction. And I found that, I still find that absolutely fascinating. I, I love designing and constructing constructing. I think I'm a very good designer and builder. But I don't do any of it now, because I 100% focus on developing curriculum and laying the front. I guess I'm building something, right? I'm laying the foundation for a truly organic horticulture industry. Hmm. And it, so it must have been quite a leap to go from that stage where you're, you're putting in your own landscaping to sort of learning about it, teaching about it, and then deciding you're going to teach other people, and then sort of you're going to teach other people how to teach about it, and sort of... Yes, I guess it's a natural progression, and, and I mean, we never stay in, perhaps, that is indicative of our current state of the economy, where you don't stay in one drop for the rest of your life, right? 
but it's also very interesting that we can evolve and and in this country at least it's much more difficult than in other countries if you don't have the uh, right training and gone through the right apprenticeships for years and years you can't go and teach but well I do have a teaching diploma now but it's just nice to be able to go where your passion leads you mm -hmm. and see where you're really good at what you're really good at mm -hmm. and then you go and develop that I really like developing people and I, I feel so strongly about wanting to Wanting our industry, mm -hmm. our gardening industry, our professional gardening industry to turn organic. I so want that mm -hmm. to happen for so many different reasons. Right? I just want to create a healthy, beautiful environment for everybody, where everybody doesn't have to get sick from the pesticides. Mm -hmm. And I want the landscapers to be happy about what they do. Right? So, would you have any advice for people? Oh, be yeah. passionate about what you do. Do what you love. And paths will show themselves, paths will open up. If you're in a job that you don't like, drop it. Develop, develop in an area that fascinates you hmm. and you will be successful. And you will like what you do. Hmm. Because if you don't, you get sick, you get resentful, mm -hmm. you know, you're not happy, you start fighting with your wife mm -hmm. or your husband and it's not good. Mm -hmm. Why we chose the thing about organic? Mm -hmm. What's what's so special about being organic, and why? And there's a little bit more involved with it. We didn't only start a college; we also started a society. Okay. And the society, the society is called the Society for Organic Urban Life Care. We call it Soul, S O U L. Mm -hmm. So you could perhaps check out their website at one point. It's organiclifecare.org. Okay. Because I didn't just do this all single-handedly. We, we were a whole, and are a whole group and a, and a growing group, mm -hmm. into two big groups in Vancouver and Victoria now. So we came together in 2000, 2001, and said, well, we, let's start an organic horticultural industry. And what is required in order to do that? So we realized that we needed three things. We needed standards. We needed a certification mm -hmm. program for the professionals so they could, you know, distinguish themselves. Mm -hmm. And um, education. Mm -hmm. Now the society is all volunteers, so the society did develop standards and certification, but the, the education landed in my lap because I just simply took it on. It's my passion, but it's a private business. Um, but it's all in support of what you know what the society and, and the industry would like to do. So we had a lot of discussion about the term organic. Because mm -hmm. we could see in the industry already that people want were representing themselves as being organic because they could see that everybody could see the writing on the wall. So they wanted to start cashing in on the goodwill that the agriculture sector had built up in the term in the term organic. I mean, it's it's mm -hmm. very successful. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, you, could, you might look at it as a marketing from mm -hmm. the marketing perspective. It's a very successful branding. Oh, absolutely. Right? I mean, it's more than that. It's a whole set of environmentally sound practices. Yeah. But there are always, you know, many many points to to an enterprise. So the branding organic is very very well. It's very valuable. So in a way, even though we, I mean, what we teach is true organic practices, we wanted to also use the term organic. And we thought, so when we do that, we cash in, really, mm -hmm. on the goodwill that's attached to it. So let's do that with integrity, because mm -hmm. we could see that you know, some people didn't quite understand mm -hmm. what organic means. Mm -hmm. So that's where the standard comes in, making sure that our standard actually complies it's, it's totally in line with the agricultural standards. If we have nothing contradictory in there, if we have nothing to degrade the, you know, the well, we other decades. So well. yeah, mm -hmm. not take advantage of it. Yeah, okay. yeah. So and take it, and and once we and we thought, well, when we can actually practice true organic horticulture right in the clients, in in, in our clients' gardens that they could see how beneficial this is and how, you know, for the environment mm -hmm. and for everybody, mm -hmm. that they would then also, okay. well, that they would then also feel better about the organic food they eat mm -hmm. and, and purchase, and so that we would actually collaborate with the agriculture sector in, in increasing the goodwill. And so that was very, very important to us. How, so, how are you collaborating with the agricultural sector? We're really in that we uh, simply continue to build the goodwill and, and continue to educate.